My name is Dominic Fee. I'm an artist based in Cork in Ireland. I work on quite a few different media, including a number of printmaking techniques. But my favourite technique is this one, stone lithography. Lithography was invented in Germany a little over 200 years ago. It's based on the principle that oil and water will never mix, they repel each other. And the work is done on slabs of limestone like this one. Here I'm cleaning the stone after having been worked on with a previous image. You remove a little of the top layer of the stone to expose fresh stone underneath, which you can then draw on again. You can use the stones over and over again. The particular stones are very fine limestones with, with very fine structure, very fine grain, which makes them suitable for drawing on. And they've got the right chemical composition. Most of the stones in use come from a particular region uh, of quarries in Germany. When we draw on a stone, we always use oil-based greasy materials. You can draw with anything that's got a greasy content, but there are dedicated crayons and pencils like the ones I'm using here. The idea is that when you draw on the stone, the greasy content of the marks penetrate a little bit into the surface of the stone, particularly if it's left for some time. And the stone begins to remember where you drew on it. This is etching the stone. I'm applying a mixture of resin dust and French chalk just to help prepare the stone to accept the etch. The etch itself is a mixture of gum arabic and a few drops of nitric acid. The stone is first hydrated with pure gum. That soaks into the areas of the stone which I didn't draw on, the white areas, and it helps them to be more water loving. In other words, it attract water and repel grease. And then the etch mixture itself is painted over the entire stone. This enhances the properties that the stone has, the non-drawn areas to attract water and the drawn areas to attract greasy ink which will eventually be put on the stone. It's not entirely well understood why that works, but it does. At this point the image must be washed out. The drawn marks are removed. You can see that a little bit of white spirits will remove the entire drawing. It seems a little bit scary, but the stone's got the memory of where the drawing is, particularly having etched it. A little bit of asphaltum, essentially a runny tar, will help strengthen that drawing. Now the gum layer is washed off because that can't be there when we're going to print or prove the stone. And at this point a leather roller is used. The stone must be proofed now with a particular ink that never dries called a proofing ink or a roll up ink.
with lithography, we use very, very little ink. Very little ink on the slab. Now before passing the inky roller over the stone, the surface of the stone is dampened with water. The water is rejected by the greasy drawing, so it only sits on the areas where there's no drawing. And as I pass the roller over the stone, the layer of water rejects the ink, so the ink only sticks to the drawing, which is also greasy. Now once I'm satisfied that the drawing doesn't need any further adjustment, I etch the stone again, almost identically to the first time. What this will do is it will repair the stone and make it extremely stable for printing, which will happen next. The stone is beautiful to draw on. Sometimes I cheat lithography and I've never met anybody who didn't immediately fall in love with drawing on the surface of the stone with crayons or pencils. It gives a very unique mark. It'll retain the subtlest of marks that you can make and it'll also take far more dark marks, uh, the full range of expressive marks that you can make. It'll reproduce them all beautifully. And also it pushes back. There are particular ways that the crayon hops across the surface, particularly when you cross hatch uh, layers over each other. You get very interesting things happening. For printing, I'm mixing ink with a clear gel called extender base. I don't want to print full strength ink for the print. It just helps to separate the tones out a bit and stops the drawing from becoming too dark and dense. It makes the ink somewhat more transparent. Unlike the proofing ink, printing, printing ink will dry after a few days. Again, the stone is washed, the proofing ink removed, the layer of gum removed, preparing for printing. It's important to roll in several different directions over the entire surface of the stone. If you don't do that, you're going to get linear lap marks forming, which will be quite distracting on the image. It's normal to take a couple of proofs on newsprint. With stone lithography, it can often take a few goes for the image to reach full strength before you go on to your proper printing paper. 
important not to rush this part of the process. We should let the stone build up at its own pace, not to try and force too much ink on too quickly. For printing the final edition, in this case I'm going to use a very fine Japanese paper called Kawashi. which is translucent and almost transparent but yet very strong. It's so smooth that it takes the image beautifully from the stone. Another reason why I put extender base in the ink is to not overwhelm the paper. The stone gets run through the press at very high pressure to squeeze as much ink as possible from the stone onto the paper. And this is the finished print. A good stable stone can print hundreds, even thousands of images. But I'm going to settle for ten in this case.